Ignition sequence start. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. Hey everybody, this is the Digital Asset Investor, and today I just got sent a really interesting piece of news, and first I want to give proper credit. It's uh, my buddy on Twitter, and the, the way you spell this is at E-C-O-S-S-E-X-R-P-1, and he's got a new James Bond logo, which I love. I'm a big James Bond fan. My favorite uh, James Bond movie is A View to a Kill. That's one of the ones I grew up on. Um, of course, the uh, Roger Moore was not necessarily my favorite James Bond, but that was my favorite James Bond movie. And that's a side note. <coughs> Sorry. Um, but here's what he sent me. This is really, really big. Visa to buy British payments firm Earthport for 100, 198 million pounds. So I wanted to read you a little bit of this, and then I'll tie this all in for you as an XRP holder. Visa Inc. is paying 198 million pounds to buy Earthport, British firm, a, a British firm that facilitate, facilitates international transactions for banks and businesses. The U.S.-based payments group said on Thursday, for Visa cross-border payments or transactions that involve parties in two or more countries represents a growing business. The volume of such payments rose 10% in 2018 fiscal year. Visa said on in, in uh, October. Now, at the end of this article, it said something interesting. The two companies that helped make this deal happen, the first one advised Earthport, and that was Rothschild and Company. The second one, that is Goldman Sachs, advised Visa on this deal. And so we've been told this week that go the companies like Goldman Sachs, oh, they're just getting out of this whole blockchain business. They're not interested. But they're working on major deals behind the scene. And how does this involve blockchain? Because you know who is a partner with Earthport since way back in 2014. Look at this. Mer Bank of America, boom, right here. Ripple. Okay. And so I wanted to show you, an, I found an article from back in 2014, real-time remittances in play for or Earthport with Ripple Labs deal. And so this is what a uh, part of what this article said. The problem in the past of moving money across border is a combination of dated technology and a dated model, said Hank Uberoy, there's another name for me to uh, butcher, He's the CEO and, and executive director of Earthport. Correspondent banks have been used for decades to move money from one country to another, but many countries, especially in the cryptocurrency space, are trying to disrupt that model. World Remit and TransFast are two examples. Um, Ripple Labs provides a network that enables real-time payments across borders in different currencies, including Bitcoin and national currencies. What Ripple Labs brings to the table that Earthport can't do on its own is handle real-time transactions. Cryptocurrency rails are real-time or near real-time. That's been an internet, uh, and, then, and then this is a quote uh, in the article from Chris Larson. There's been an internet of information for more than 20 years, but there's now an, the notion of the internet of value, said Chris Larson, co-founder and chief, chief executive of Ripple Labs. Now, Folks, I know it's so easy to get frustrated and upset and bogged down at staring at all the red and the market's been down for the last year and everybody's all depressed. I know it's easy to get sucked into that. But the things that are going on behind the scenes, Visa is buying this company. If you don't think that Visa is, is trying to prevent their own death, then think again. That's exactly what these types of things are about. Visa and American Express and MasterCard, all these companies behind the scenes are doing what they need to do, whether it's buying companies, merging, whatever. They're doing what they need to do um, in order to survive. And the banks are going to do the same things. All that we're waiting on regulations and all of that. But these people are going to do what they need to do to survive, period. 
And I'll, so what, what all of this is, this is the big, huge, monster, big picture. Don't, don't stay bogged down in all this stupid, what the prices are today and all that. What matters is what you, the foundation you're seeing laid right now is what's important. Um, it, the money, all of the money and the, the, the awesome returns, that will all come. But first, the foundations have to be laid, and that includes things like this. It includes some of this regulation. And like Brad Garlinghouse said uh, recently in his AMA, um, a lot of this took longer than even he thought. And so <clears throat> um, it's easy to get bogged down in all that, but sometimes some of the things take a little longer than, than everyone thought. And that's okay. Um, as, long, as long as you did what everybody that I know of has told you to do, which is a don't invest more than you can afford to lose and, and not investing more than you can afford to lose is what gives you the staying power necessary to hang in there for the long term or the mid to long term. I don't see this as a very long term. I see it as imminent any day now, any month now, at the worst, any year now. <clears throat> but but uh, this is it's all everything's happening. Everything is going, it's going, it, things are a little behind schedule and it's as simple as that. And that's from Brad Garlinghouse's mouth. Um, but I wanted to finish speaking of this, um, uh, the bigger picture by showing you the end. Hoder did a new blog today. If you want to go read the whole thing, um, it's uh, xrpcommunity.blog. And uh, he's a, a blogger on there and does, does writes a lot of really good stuff. He ends it, and I like to read his last, I usually like to read his ending. Which economy do you prefer? Despite the crypto market's current stunted size, there now exists two distinct economies in the world. One that has historically catered its opportunities to those already swimming in wealth, and one that represents arguably is the single greatest innovation in the de democratization of finance and property rights. One of these two economies represents the future of global trade, finance, and even intergenerational wealth. The other will either join this new model of business or will be relegated to the dusty corners of a museum. And just as an aside here, Visa just kept itself. These are the kind of things Visa is doing to keep itself from being in the dusty corners of a museum. Because Ripple is not going to be anywhere dusty. It's going to be shiny and new and it's going to be a, a bright, shining star. Everything around us is changing. Ripple is helping banks modernize and adapt this new mode of value transfer. Entire new industries are springing up that acknowledge some of their customers' preference to never leave crypto, completely abandoning the initial goal of cashing out of an investment. Given XRP's potential to transform the global economy, it's no wonder they're preferring to avoid fiat currency altogether. And even for those that still regard crypto merely as an investment, the staying power of the underlying technology has clearly made an impression on even the most skeptical analysts. <clears throat> While fear, uncertainty, and doubt now grip the traditional financial markets, those of us that have weathered similar storms in crypto in 2018 have no doubt what the future holds. And I'll finish that with a hashtag no doubt. I'm a digital asset investor. I'm not an invest, investment advisor. This is for entertainment purposes only. Please subscribe and hit the like button and tell your friends and family that Visa just bought Earthport, which is one of Ripple's partners. Thanks for listening.